Hey Edmonton, it's Mark Cordy, offensive lineman for the Edmonton Elks. Really excited to get everybody to the Brookfield at Commonwealth Stadium and get this season started. From the room perspective, just to see the, the history in there and how that was, how it's uh, recognized uh, for the players, and like it'd be great if every fan could see that and uh, see the, not only the history that's there, but also um, I don't know, it's unique to see where where players interact and how they how they can uh, get prepared for a game and so on. And, and you know, as as a player and certainly as a coach, you you always are looking for various things that you can draw on to motivate you, to get you focused, those type of things. So I thought that was really cool. And your first look, Mark, down there, a place you're going to spend a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Great place to spend spend most of your day and um, certainly set up great for players to, you know, sort of flow through their day and, and have everything they need to be successful. Um, you know, we touched on the history piece as well. Um, you know, it's great to come in and see, see names, see pictures of, um, you know, sort of the pillars of uh, one of the premier organizations in the league is, is very cool to see and very great to have on a day-to-day on -day basis for us. And Cheryl, same for you. What was it like being down there? Yeah, walking in the locker room was a neat experience for me. I've not been in a locker room before, so uh, having the opportunity to see on the lockers who, what players have played and used that locker in the past I think is a real nice tribute to them. Seeing the names of players from the past on the wall, some of them who've coached Mark has, was special. And then also the tour outside of the immediate locker room, seeing the training personnel and the equipment and the friendliness of the people and, and the sense of community within the locker room was really important to me. I mean, what, what sort of memories do you have of this stadium so far? Like any memorable games that stand out or players that you really remember watching here, like experiences that, that resonate with you in this, in this spot? Well, so I'll answer it in two ways as far as, so one was, you know, as, as, uh, as a young fellow a long time ago growing up, you know, watching Tom Wilkinson, Jim Germany, um, Warren Moon, Dan Kepley, those guys uh, play. I didn't come to the games here because I, I, I didn't grow up in, in Edmonton. Uh, but certainly, you know, as I started coming to games here, you know, uh, watching Tracy Ham, Damon Allen, a lot of those uh, players and the impact that they had in the stadium. We used to sit, sit in uh, Section T, so right at midfield, you know, a few rows up and uh, just to be that close to the action and, and seeing a lot of, you know, saw a great cup here. Uh, you know, that was a memorable game. Some Labor Day games where, you know, the stadium is packed uh, on the, uh, or the post-Labor Day game, you know, the Friday or Saturday uh, afterwards. So just the energy, energy in the building, um, very exciting. And we were talking about the tailgating, and you guys yeah. have been doing that the last couple of years. Yes, yeah, so the last couple of years we've tailgated with friends of ours who have a son that plays for BC Lions, and uh, we enjoyed the tailgate experience very much. This the past year we got our own stall, and we've met a lot of great people there. But Brent failed to mention that the, one of the most favorable memories of the stadium here is it was the place of our first date. So that goes back 35 <laughs> years. I <laughs> don't know why he didn't mention that. <laughs> So there's a lot of memories that have been made here in this stadium. That's awesome. So you remember that game. Do you remember who they played? Or Not a two? clue. I didn't no. know much about football. <laughs> they played the Riders uh, that game. So that I do remember. And uh, the uh, uh, we won. Edmonton won. So that was that was a huge plus. But That's awesome. But that was the first, yeah, first date. So. You're going to have to do some digging to get out of that one. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm trying. You can see I'm trying. But uh, here, I'll change the subject real quick. And just to, just to add to, like, the, the tailgate has been – a lot of fun, like uh, not only meeting a lot of other uh, fans, but you know, we've had we have uh, there's some people that we know that also tailgate, or as you know whether when Mark was playing in Ottawa and uh, you know people would come by and jeer us a little bit, or come to also um, you know support you know just celebrate the game, uh, but you know we have a our, our family uh, family and friends certainly rally around football uh, and football in Edmonton and and uh, whether it's at a, at a game when Mark was playing or, or at other Edmonton games as we come as, as fans just to cheer on the team. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you can, I, I remember I, I, before I worked for the organization, I, I was a season seat holder. And 
you could see you could see your guys' clan at the Red Blocks games. I don't know, there's 20 people in, in number 65. Yeah, at, so at least awesome. 20. Yeah, at least 20. Well, yeah. 65 jerseys are ro rolling deep yeah. wherever we go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's awesome. A couple more for you, and then we'll get to Mark, okay. and we'll, we'll split it up. But, I mean, just to have him him here, to be able to come to, you know, 10 games a year at home, maybe another, hopefully another in the playoffs, so 11. Um, what does it mean to have have him home and have you know be able to be part of that on a more regular basis? Mm, well, I think it's very important for him to be home here playing. He has a huge family here, a huge network of friends. He's grown up in Spruce Grove his whole life, so there are many people that support him and his dreams. And in addition to that, uh, just being you know he's getting married. It's important for him to be at, at home in the evenings and be part of the team and just have a balanced life and be able to pursue things that he can when he's got the support of others around him. Awesome. You, Brad? Yeah, and I think, um, I think Tucker, you know, like his, <laughs> uh, his dog, I think that's, uh, he, he will really appreciate, actually Tiana will really appreciate the fact that, <laughs> that you're here for, for Tucker. But no, I, I think that, uh, you know, having, having been part, uh, like as a family, been part of the football community in the Edmonton area for a lot of years, for I don't know, I won't say the number, but for a lot of years and the number of people that have been involved both in my journey as, a, as in the football world and certainly within Marks and your brothers and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of people that have, uh, that have had the opportunity to grow it within the game of football and uh, to be able to celebrate that here and watch. And, you know, I, I, one, of, one of the other memories from when I used to come to games would be, you know, to be able to point down and say, hey, I know that guy. Or uh, you know, I know that guy through another guy type thing, and so you know, if there's a if there's a young player, there's a an existing player, uh, you know, an old guy like myself that's able to, you know, to identify with someone that's that's on the team. It builds community. I think that builds uh, that's good for good overall for, um, yeah, good overall for community. That's a good segue. What does it mean to be that guy, Mark? To, to be that person who's on the field and. You know, there's a dad sitting there with his, his 12 year old son or whatever and say, you know, he played at the U of A, you can do that, he's playing with the Elks. Like, what does that mean to you to be that sort of uh, the face of homegrown football here? Yeah, it's, it's so exciting to be, you know, having been one of those kids that, you know, maybe got to meet a few guys from the team um, or, you know, had a connection through family or through someone who knows somebody um, to, to be able to, like you said, point down and say, hey, I know that guy through somehow. Um, you know, to now be that guy on the other side of it um, is just so exciting to kind of c keep contributing to that cycle of, you know, someone else was that person for me and now maybe I can be that person um, for another kid or another group of kids that are growing up um, in the youth programs around Edmonton and Northern Alberta, um, all the way up through the university ranks. Um, you know, just just very exciting to be, be a part of that cycle for sure. Was there ever a choice or was there a question when you became a free agent where you're going to come was it was it uh, was there a debate or was this where you had your heart set you know I it's something I've really I've always I've always wanted um, for a long time and and you know it, it was always up in the air of if it would ever work out um, because there's a lot of a lot of pieces that have to come together for it to happen um, but when it as soon as it seemed like it was it was it was looking like it could happen um, I think we were all very excited on my end you know the, the organization was in on their end um, as soon as that happened, it was it was very exciting, and, and it was kind of full steam ahead to, you know, to get something done and to to get to this point of being um, in the organization and hopefully in, in training camp shortly and, and on to playing games. Um, as you were growing up, and, and your dad and uh, your uncle and just your family in general as a football family, what was your what was your motivation to play the game? Like, what made you drawn to the game? Um, and did you have a choice? I guess <laughs> to play football or not. Yeah, I uh, you know what I, I I was fortunate to play play all sorts of sports growing up. Um, spent a lot of time playing hockey, basketball, um, you know, just about any sport that a kid can play. Got a chance to play it. Loved it. What really brought me back to football over and over um, was just the love of the game. Love love being with the guys. I had a lot of really good friends that I got to grow up playing football with. Um, you know, just a, I just had fun coming to football practice every day, um, and just kind of stuck with that. That that love for the game continued through high school and university and and into the professional level, and, and it's just a, a joy to come to work every day and, and continuing doing it. it. It seems amazing that I, I do this as a job now. is is fantastic, yeah. So if I could, I, I got to throw, <laughs> throw this in there just because, so all, all, everything you said to obviously agree with, because uh, I can't counter that. 
early on, I would say, when he first started playing, it was probably a bit of yeah. a combination of, of uh, you know, his brother was playing. And so, you know, that was certainly a motivator. That and the gear. Like, that and the gear, <laughs> being able to wear the helmet and the jersey and every, all that type of stuff. Although, you know, the helmet often was a little too tight. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, I think that that whole, that whole piece of it and being part of a team, uh, I certainly saw that, you know, from him as well, being part of a team and building friendships over a long period of time. Uh, you had that in Spruce Grove for mm -hmm. sure, yeah. uh, with a lot of the, a lot of the guys there that are still really good friends and and um, in university and so on. So yeah, the two boys, right? You have two boys. In the two boys, yeah. So as a, as a father and as a mother, like, what did it mean to to watch watch them grow up with the game and love it so much? Like that must have been just. I mean, you played obviously, so it must have. Not that you ever forced your kids into something. I've got a three-year-old who I've given 10 <laughs> mini sticks to. But not that you pushed them anywhere. But to see them embrace that and, and to go with it, what did it mean to you as parents? Well, I, I provided a lot of mini sticks as well. There are a lot of mini sticks. And, um, yeah, it, it meant a lot just to see them enjoy sport overall. So whether it was playing hockey and being in the goalie gear on the driveway or, you know, or playing football in the backyard or baseball or whatever the sport was, just to see them enjoying sport and then also enjoying the time with their friends and uh, building that. Uh, like um, Cheryl and I often would talk about just the, the benefit of the life skills that, that, uh, that young people get from team sports and the benefit that that brings. And I think it, it, it builds a lot uh, from building relationships, handling adversity, you know, confrontation, all those type of things uh, are, it, so it just made, made me proud that they were interested in, in sports and, you know, for both of them, they ended up playing a fair bit of hockey and football, so. And for you, Cheryl? Uh, for me, it was important to see them enjoying friends, but also enjoying the number of adults that came into their circle when they're involved in sports. So whether it was the equipment manager, which Mark was always on good terms with because he always needed the helmet adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so whether it was the equipment manager or the concession person, who Mark also enjoyed, <laughs> but all of the adults that come together for whatever purpose, and it's not always for the betterment of their own kid, but just to see their kid connected and involved in something and provide a balance between their academics and their, uh, you know, the rest of their life, have it growing in confidence. And as Brent said, you know, sometimes learning to deal with conflict, adversity, seasons where you don't win for a long time, and the life skills that come from that. So for me, I just loved being able to take him there. He wanted to be the first one there all the time, and I can guarantee you he was the last one out of the change room every time because I would be waiting. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a happy place for him, and it was a place that he could grow as a human being and as a person and, and hopefully to give back. You know, in his later years, being able to work with younger children and be able to help younger kids do camps, that type of thing, just to contribute. Awesome. Football's obviously given you a lot. Um, your involvement in the game now, beyond beyond as a player, giving back through some community things. Um, what does that mean to you to, to be in the community and being that? We've talked a little bit about seeing on the field, but even more so going to a minor football practice or being involved in camps. What does that mean to you? Yeah, for sure. That's that's a piece that I'm I'm really excited to to spend more time on now. Being being in Edmonton 12 months a year, um, and being invested in the community long term, um, is is huge to grow that you know minor football, youth football community. Um, in Edmonton that I, I got to benefit from growing up um, will be will be exciting for me um, and just you know being able to, to give that experience back to a younger kid and, and let them let them grow up and let them see a, see an older player that you know came from a similar and might come from the same exact city they did went to the same high school they did um, and give them a bit of a path to follow is, is certainly exciting to, to be a part of you talked about motivation for you getting into the game and maybe sort of you know, going through minor football and through university and getting to this level. But what's the motivating, sort of the driving force for you now? Um, you played in the league, you're an established player. What drives you sort of every day to take it to the next level? Yeah, for sure. So now now coming in at this point, um, you know, there, there's a few things that, that make you get up out of bed in the morning. Um, you know, obviously the, the top one being winning um, is what we're, you know, it's professional sports. That's what we're here to do is win games. Um, so that's certainly goal number one. And, and you know, that sort of ties into the, the community piece. I, you know, I had a good memory of, of being young and, and being, you know, sitting at the first game of the season when they unveiled the Grey Cup banner. Um, so, you know, the opportunity to potentially be a part of that memory 
um, as a player on the field for another kid sitting in the stands is is incredibly motivating. Um, you know, just to keep continue building, um, building on the legacy that's been created by so many people in the in the Elks organization for so many years is, you know, that's all the motivation anybody needs to to get out of get out of bed in the morning and work hard for for a goal. Getting the band together, back together to an extent <laughs> here on the offensive line. Um, maybe speak a little bit to that being with Beardo, who's who's been a rock here for so many seasons, and the connection you guys are gonna have. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to working with Dave. Um, we got a chance to work together for for a year in university, um, and so he's he's always been someone you know that was that was a figure for me to chase as I worked through university um, to have somebody that I, I played with that was then playing professionally. Um, certainly, footsteps to follow in, and and now you know someone I've kept an eye on my first few years in the CFL, someone I've you know kind of looked up to, and and so now getting a chance to play with him every day. Um, is really exciting to be a part of, and, and I'm you know just looking forward to, to being able to draw on his knowledge on a daily basis. Awesome. We've got this announcement today about the, the doubleheader with the U of A playing here before us on the 15th of October. I'll go to both of you guys. Um, first, I don't think you ever played here um, no. during your university career, so what do you think that will mean to those guys? Yeah, I think it'll be I think it'll be so exciting for, for the players at U of A um, just to get a chance to be be in the stadium. Um, you know, be around, you know, what pro football looks like, um, get some exposure to that and, you know, and just, you know, uh, um, you know, it'll be a highlight of a season and, and a landmark that they'll sort of look back on the university career, whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, and they'll, they'll remember playing in Commonwealth Stadium, um, doing a doubleheader with the Elks. That'll be, a, that'll be a memory that sticks out for a long time for those guys. And you had the opportunity to do that, so maybe you can you can uh, recount that story for us here on camera, just about that that '88 game at Commonwealth Stadium as a bear. Yeah, so it was uh, it, it was a thrill. It was a thrill, you know. Even though you have a stadium here that seats you know 50 plus thousand, you know we had five six thousand people in the stands. It was uh, something we were playing Calgary quite loud. It was still grass field back then, and uh, and we won. We did. We we won. I do remember that. Um, but it was it was just a a surreal feel, a feeling to be in a stadium, you know, versus we used to play at Varsity Stadium, not currently where it's at Foot Field, um, and uh, to play, you know, a major league stadium on a major league stage. Uh, it was on TSN actually at the time as well, so it was it was quite a quite a treat. Um, so I, you know, I see that for these players as well, um, for the U of A players to be able to to come and to play on a bigger stage. Uh, like this, and then you know to have a double header. I, I don't know if it's ever been done, uh, so it's it, it's a unique opportunity for the players and a unique op unique opportunity for them. Awesome. I think it's the second time it'll be done. CFL, uh, Guelph, and Hamilton played back to back when Hamilton was in Guelph. Oh, here. right. Okay. Right. First time. First time here. Um, I know they tried to do it a few years ago and couldn't couldn't figure it out, but we did. So that's good. Um, when the season starts, what's the over/under on 65s we're going to see in the stands that you guys are going to be buying in the next <laughs> few months? Can we set what's the line? So the number that we're going to buy is going to be limited, but the number that's maybe <laughs> that we're collectively 65s. If I was going to put the over/under, I'd put it right around a 32 somewhere in there. I think I, we and I might lose. 40. I might be. I might be under. I think we could get to 40. There's family that already <laughs> want to come down today and get one and. I'm just say, waiting for the number yeah. <laughs> so we can get it on the jersey. <laughs> that's, that's excellent. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see quite a few around, and I'm sure we'll see a few that uh, are from outside the family too as people get to know Mark and his story. Um, with respect to that, that home opener, have you guys thought at all about what it's going to be like to sit in the stands and watch Mark come out? Like, is that something you've been contemplating over the last week? It's only been a week since he signed. It feels like a long, <laughs> long time we're talking about that. But yeah. the opportunity to see your son right out that tunnel um, onto this field and you know in a community that means so much. Maybe we'll start with you, Cheryl. Well, I think it, it's just going to be a really neat experience. We saw him do it as a Red Black, so it's going to be even better to see him do it as an Elk, and something certainly memorable. And you, Brent? Yeah, I think memorable, and to be able to to share that opportunity with with family and friends, and you know, uh, you know, you're going to be getting ready to play the game, and and you know, coming out like that. But for you know, for us. Uh, that pregame starts really early, you know, with the tailgate, and it it, it, it can carries on in, in the in the stands and just that that excitement of uh, of the season getting underway. I know there's a lot of excitement about uh, the season ahead uh, for the Elks, and so really excited about that, and certainly a, a highlight to uh, to see number 65 run out there as well. So, 
the right colors this time. Yes. Have, you, have, you, have, have you thought about that over the last week? I mean, it's been, we've been, you've been doing lots of interviews. Everybody's excited in the community about having, you know, a high profile guy come back. Have you thought about that initial sort of burst out onto the field for, for the home opener? Yeah, very excited for it. It's always been, you know, playing in Commonwealth Stadium has always been, you know, a, a date that I circle on my calendar. Um, so to speak, and, and so getting a chance to do that, you know, for the first time is, is going to be very exciting to come out of, um, you know, the proper tunnel um, and, and just share that experience with, with family, with friends um, for the first time and as well for, you know, for nine home games throughout the year and, and some playoff games as well. Um, just an experience that I'm really excited for to, to take that all in. Um, this is not maybe so much a question. It's just sort of something that you guys can speak to, and I think you're perfectly suited to do that given your, your ties to football, but we talk a lot about football being family here. I know that's something that the coaching staff is going to stress, and that's something upstairs, even with the business ops that we've, we've talked about. Um, football is family for you. You've lived that. Can you sort of encapsulate somehow what, what the game has meant to, to your family? I know that's a tough one because it's given you so much. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, I think it's I think it's actually, it's changed. And I would, like, in a, in a, in a way, in the last couple of years, if we look at like, um, you know, as, as um, we've been involved in football, my wife and I both, and, uh, you know, for myself for longer and so on, but uh, as uh, Mark and his brother have, have played, um, it's brought our extended family, you know, uh, just a reason to get together. You know, we look at the last two years where we you haven't been able to get together as much, you know, as, as community, as family, and so on. Um, but those opportunities, you know, through football, bring people together and whether it's in Regina, here, Vancouver, you know, we've seen that. So I think that bringing people together both as family, but also, um, you know, as a broader football friend community that we also see as part of the, you know, the football, the broader football family, it's very close. So. I think it's that ability to rally around something that everybody knows something about. So um, some of us understand football more than others. We're all learning, continue to learn. It was hard for me to learn the game of football because Brent was always coaching and the boys were on the field. So I was in the stands with others that may or may not have understood the, the minute details of football. So it's taken me longer than some to learn the game, but I feel like I've come a long ways now that I have Brent sitting beside me for watching Mark play. But uh, it's just a chance to connect. And, uh, you know, our oldest son coaches at Lizard, so being able to hear about his teammates, or not teammates, but the kids he's coaching, hearing about the other teammates that Mark's had, and I don't know, a common, a common ground for communication. Awesome. Anything you want to add on that sort of front, Mark? Yeah, just it's been such a, such a gathering point, um, you know, growing up. Um, you know, that was, that was what me and my friends did as we went and played football. And, and so it's been a gathering point from then all the way through, you know, university, um, sort of brought everybody around it. And then, and then, you know, playing, playing professionally has been just someone, like you said, for everybody to gather around, whether they're, you know, intense football people or not. Some people are, are happy to, it brings them together to, to come sit out on a nice evening in July and, and drink a beer in the stadium and, and just take in a nice night with friends. And some people are really into the football and, and it's just been a really good uh, gathering spot for, for our family and our friends. That whole sort of group kind of gives them something to get together around. Um, any sort of message you have for the fans heading into the season? I know there's a lot of excitement, but anything you want to say to them in terms of what the season you, you hope will, will hold? Yeah, I you know I think I think just like all of us, there's a lot of optimism right now that um, you know it's going to be it's going to be an exciting season. We've sort of turned over the whole organization has has got a new face on it, and and so you know I think myself just like many other people are are excited to see the successes come as the as the season season begins to. You know, string wins together to play well at home. Um, you know, have have a great season and and push into the playoffs as well is I think what we're all optimistic for. In my opinion, taco and bag. <laughs> taco and bag is the winner. We did uh, we did well for oh, for the Ottawa game when Ottawa <laughs> played here at Edmonton last year.